Welcome back to Liberty Marksman. I'm Scott. And I'm Ken. And today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to shoot some Duracoat out of a can. No That's... compressor needed. Nope. Everything's in one kit. From your degreaser to uh, the Scotch-Brite to roughen up the surface. This stuff's been out on the market for probably about two years now. We have yet to use it, but uh, we're going to show you how you do it. Yeah, we've had a lot of people ask us, hey, I don't have a compressor and I don't have a sandblast cabinet or I don't have an access to have something sandblasted. How can I get a quality coating on my firearm? Well, right here is a great alternative. Well, it's a great example, too, because we've got two pistol bills going on right now and this is going to be mine, so I figured, what the hell, I'll just do the spray can uh, flat dark earth. Cause yeah, because he's got a fetish I, for it. I like flat dark earth. So, already got a raw lower. Hipster. And we're going to show you. Yeah. We're going to show you how to scuff this thing up just using some scotch brush. Uh, this is the little pad that they gave with the kit. That sure as hell isn't enough. That sure as hell ain't going to be enough. So we've got some extra scotch bright. Um, not a big deal. But let's take you out and uh, get you in the shop and show you how to do this stuff. All right, so per their instructions, you're supposed to douche it down with their true strip. Is that what they call it? Yeah, true strip. And then sand it. That's going to be a real waste of uh, true strip because then you have to spray it again. So I'm going to suggest that you go to the Scotch Brite first. And then once you get all that dust and dirt all over it, you can spray it all off at once, and then it'd be one and done. So at this point, we're just going to take some Scotch Brite and we're just going to rub all those surfaces until we get that surface to lift up just a little bit. It's actually probably going to smooth it out more because this stuff's all brand new. This is a 2A armament handrail. It's kind of hard to see. I don't think that's coming through very well. But this is the tedious part where we're just going to spend a bunch of uh, time running the surfaces and smoothing them out so it'll adhere the paint. They're like they're so thrilled. Well, you can see. This handguard is like a cheese grater and it will just make quick work of a piece of scotch brite. This is a joke. This is like somebody laughing their ass off because it's never going to make it through the no. whole fucking long gun. That's just a sample to show you what you should buy. <laughs> yeah, I tend to gravitate more towards the green stuff. It kind of better all purpose. He's got this, got this dulled up pretty well, kind of like his personality. <laughs> See what Durkoat were telling you, it's not as critical as you think to get it. You don't need to get this down to barrel and room. You just, all you're really doing is kind of roughing up the surface just a little bit. Give it a little something to adhere to. Boring. <laughs> be thankful that I didn't like record the entire time I was doing this because you'd have probably dumped us off a long time ago. The little pieces, the little pieces really suck. So now this is the time, I mean, if you're, if you're going to get into doing your own or even if you have a finished lower and you're going to end up having it coated or whatever, if you wanted to do any work on your magwell, if you wanted to flare this a little bit or smooth it out, Obviously, now is the time to do that before you do any of the coating or any of the finish work. Because, you know, if you had a finished one and you start chewing into this and sanding it out and making it smooth so you get that quick mag change, uh, you're just going to leave the raw aluminum. So, this is just another one of those options where you can do it at home and there's nothing out of the ordinary. No sandblaster, no ovens, no compressor. This is straight up just labor and a can of paint. Got everything roughed up with the scotch brite. We're gonna use this uh, supplied true strip. You gotta shake it too. They recommend two to three minutes. On this stuff? Yep. See, it's called reading. It's on the label. Really? Yeah. Who the thunk it? Mm -hmm. All right. So, like I had mentioned before, instead of hitting it with the true strip, then sanding it with the scotch brite. Save your time because you're just going to make a mess out of it with a scotch brite. So do it once, do it right. Trust me, it'll work out fine. 
So as a suggestion, choose your uh, proper breathing device. Keep your lungs uh, fresh. I don't know if this is going to do much against these chemicals, but it's better than nothing. And a catch basin so that you can let it all drip off into that and they have the runoff going for you. All right, let's spray this thing down. Now this stuff does kind of smell like acetone, so just an FYI. What's so damn fascinating about that? Well, you know what? This little can and the amount of shit that's on this rail, mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have nearly enough. Well, that's unfortunate. Just a product review. That's all I'm doing. I've never used it before, but... So would you recommend uh, some brake clean and then maybe go to that? Yeah. Yeah, something with a little more pressure, something that you can put a nozzle down in there and get it out. I mean, it might be all right on the smaller pieces where you can get in real well, but it ain't coming off that rail. Some with a lot less contours in that rail. Yeah. Yeah, the brake worked fine. Give me an upper. So now, I'm going to try to get this in the light. You can see the amount of stuff that's in the bottom. I don't know if you can hear me. I take my mask off. So you can see in that light the amount of Scotch-Brite debris and oils that are holding that material in there. If I were to coat that and lock that in there, that'd be the roughest surface ever. And that's not what we really want. So this stuff's probably not the best plan to go with this. So again, we're, you can actually still see fibers in there and it just won't push it off. All right, you can see, I sprayed the hell out of this thing and it is just not moving those Scotch-Brite fibers off that material. And again, you can't coat, you can't put a new coating down on top of that. That's just awful. How about some generic brake clean from AutoZone? So, how about some brake clean? Non-chlorinated. Non-chlorinated, so it's friendly on your hands. Right. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. Brake clean never seems to amaze me. Look at how it took that stuff right off of there. It's also great for locating micro cuts. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll light you up. Not like new skin. But not like this shit. <laughs> not like new skin. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to jump up and do the neutron dance, you try this shit out. <laughs> that shit will light you up. I'm thinking a can of brake clean probably get you a lot further along down the road than uh, their can of metal prep. Now I would say just as a, my opinion, to run this by you, that you probably want to use their stripper after you've brake cleaned it because brake clean will leave like a powdery residue. Yeah. And, and their stuff will remove that no problem. This is definitely taking the, the fibers and the oils off but it will leave a little residue so I'm saving what we have left just so we still follow the rules follow the instructions yeah we don't always well not often do we follow everything to the key well sometimes you have to learn as you go and obviously that wasn't cutting the scotch bright off. So no, you know what, if I rip through a can of uh, a $3.50 can of uh, AutoZone brake clean, I don't really give a shit as long as it gets it off. And then we'll come back in with the balance of theirs to get the residue off. Now, of course, you always have to be careful mixing chemicals. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be some comments on that. So it says now, with the actual paint, that you gotta shake this bitch for three minutes. So shake it, bitch. Nice. Okay, as you can see, all we did is make a loop out of some wire, 
And then that way we can actually hold it this way or this way without it falling down. And then we can hang it when we're done. Same with the muzzle brake. No big deal because you can actually rotate it. Not worry about getting lines. Alright, so Scott shook the hell out of this thing. And now to release the hardener into the paint, what you do is you go to the top of the cap and you remove this plug. Then you go to the bottom of the cap and if you see here, you take this here and you just push that down hard and that'll re that releases it into the uh, paint. Then you got to shake it again for another three minutes or so. You can actually hear it when it released. That's it. Now shake it for another three minutes. Once you've pushed the piercing valve in, discard that thing. Otherwise, you can't set the can down. Now, it is good for 30 days after you pierce it. And what's really cool is, because you'll have more than what it takes to do this rifle, or pistol, I should say, they give you an extra tip. So if you do decide to coat something else later, and the tip's all jacked, you're covered. Of so course, you can cover. Of course you can go horizontal or vertical by adjusting your nozzle, like most paint cans. I think first shots. Let's see what it lays down like. I say to go with three coats, so we're just gonna do a light mist. See, just a real try to get all the angles, top, bottom, front, back, side. Now take your time. Don't rush it, because once you get a run, you gotta strip the whole thing down. Yeah, there's no fixing that. So that's first coat on that. And you can see it's fully wetted out. And you want to go with even overlapping strokes. And because of all the different contours on the lower, with the magwell pocket and the trigger pocket, it's real easy to get a run. So it's take, best off to take your time and do it in coats. It'll get there. That's coated. You can see that sheen. Pretty nice finish. I don't know if it's going to dry that way. Awfully glossy. It should dull down a little I bit. I hope so. That's the first coat. No muzzle brakes. They're a real pain in the ass. Anything round, <laughs> as you can see, it doesn't spin with the wire. So you actually gotta go above your head and below your head. And... Between coats, keep the can upside down and wait till the spray paint stops. That'll clear your tip and it won't clog up on you for the next time. Yep, now they recommend five minutes between coats minimum. So we're waiting. Smoke them if you got them. I'm going to try to get those angles that I may have missed last time. A little bit heavier coat. We've got something to flash to. And I got to get both sides of that pick rail. Well, that covers really well. Especially the second go around here. Yep. 
And it does flat out. It doesn't stay glossy, so I'm kind of happy with that. Hey, that's got pretty good coverage. Well, see that movement? Yeah. It's your early stages of Parkinson. Well, thank you. Michael. My little ties are like fucking with me. Pardon my French. No parlez-vous français. Yeah, you've already said too much. This is a tricky magwell and trigger pocket. Yeah, but a nozzle issue. Up. Two nozzle. Not going to deal with that. And the third and funnel coat. Be sure to look over everything really good and make sure you didn't miss anything because it's easy to do. And it sure lays on glossy. Yeah. That means it's thick. <laughs> well, that'll be fun with the pinholes. Yeah, no joke. Talk about run, Scott. You know, my can's leaking. I don't know if this is going to make another 30 days. You've made it to this third coat, just take your time still because you don't want to run it now. You'd be no. awfully, awfully pissed. <laughs> Can's kind of acting up at the third round again. Not quite sure they got that nozzle technology down. There are three coats. Now, Duracoat says that in 24 hours, you should be able to assemble this rifle or pistol, which is what this is, in 24 hours in a light use. Now the full cure from other Durco products is 30 days. Um, they don't say anything about that in the package. This package doesn't say anything about that, but I'm going to pretty much say it's going to be about probably the same thing. They get a true hardness around 30 days, so it'll be battle ready in 30. It's a long way time to wait, but you know, for doing it at your at home and doing it for yourself, not paying somebody 300 bucks to do it and spend about 40 bucks to do it yourself with some time, might be an option for you. No, about the can last in 30 days. I don't think it's going to happen. We're actually getting some leakage. With the, By the second coat, we needed to change out the nozzle. And on the third coat, we started to get leaking around the top of the actual nozzle around where it actually pops on. It's just going to be a mess. Yeah. I don't think it's going to make it. So, stay tuned. We'll see you in a couple days. See you in a couple days. Put this thing together. All right, it's been two days since we coated Scott's parts. So why don't we bring you in closer so he can show it off. So this is our first attempt at Duracoat out of the rattle can. And I'll tell you what. I'm really kind of impressed with uh, the finish. That stuff turned out really nice. And its color match to the actual Magpul color is really pretty much spot on. I will say they hit it a lot closer than SIG. If you can't tell what this is going to be by what Come I'm on. So it's been about a week and four days since... This guy got this biatch painted. Yeah, we finally got it all. I finally got it all together, and uh, I'll tell you what, it looks sweet. So after all the ball busting, I finally got it together. So he, uh, he stopped railing me about it. 
but that fit and finish is really really nice so one added little feature that I put on my pistol that I don't think Ken knows about I know everything damn it well it turned out pretty damn good huh yeah I'm really excited I want to get it out on the range and actually get some rounds through it and actually mm -hmm. we start doing some of our side-by-side -side tests with his 300 blackout because I chose the 556 yep get them out and run Yep. You know what? Uh, I've never been a huge fan of flat decker. <laughs> That's not true. It That's looks so really good. Eventually, I'm going to steal it. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> that and orange. Yeah, you got a thing for orange. Yeah, well, you know, that's how it happens. Mm -hmm. So stick around, guys. Like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, don't take liberty for granted.